Hey guys, Mars Lincoln here bringing another Dragon Ball Z Dokkan battle video and so today we're going to do the team building guide for the physical Boo Tanks transforms into Buhan uh, Extreme Z battle that is coming to global with the release of the Goku and Boo banners. They are coming out all at the same time. This is obviously good if you are someone who uh, doesn't care about summoning on the banners the second they come out. You can of course uh, do these Extreme Z battles and get yourself a nice little bunch of extra stones ready to actually go into your summons. Because of course LR EZAs are only 10 stages but you do still get 30 stones, you get 3 stones per stage. And then all EZAs have a mission for beating stage 7 which gives you another 3 stones. So 33 stones in total as well of, of course there's the Vegito one as well. So 66 stones if you want to get those before you uh, do your summons. You get all the medals to EZA the unit. You get five type Kai's so you can get them straight up to SA25 and you get some uh, orbs of the same typing as well. So LR EZAs, the big thing with these is that you, whilst there is a weakness category, which in this case is Battle of Wits, that is basically used to determine uh, defense. So any non-Battle of Wits characters will take big damage from the boss, especially as you get into the later stages. Some of these EZAs you can like brute force through with just really strong teams with lots of like the best LRs in the game. But whilst you can technically do that, as long as you can put out enough damage, um, non Battle of Wits units are going to take a lot of damage. So that is something you have to be aware of. Now with LR EZA's legendary power, the link, is the key to doing big damage. So you want to try and have as many LRs as possible on the team. Um, get that link active and then do that big damage. You can do LR EZA's with a full team of TURs. I have done it before. It just takes longer because obviously you do less damage but it is still perfectly doable. So we're going to jump in and we're going to take a look at the Battle of Wits category. It's not the biggest category in the world, but it does have a few decent LRs as well as some different leader skill options. We even have some heroes options in there for the uh, fellow Heroes Agenda boys out there. But as always with the team building guide, we'll be going through my top picks and honorable mentions. If there's any units you think I missed out or should have talked more about, do let me know down below in the comment section. And if you do find the guide helpful at all, do hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you are new. So jumping straight in, uh, one of the best options for the leader is going to be the Carnival STR Super Saiyan Goku from the Hachiak special. He leads Battle of Wits for 3 key and 200%, so just a full 200% leader for every single unit on the category he's an lr so he's got legendary power and he's got type advantage so he is by far the best pick for the lead because you can just put any units on the team you want and they're all getting the full 200 leader skill uh, and then yeah he's an str lr so very well suited to this event uh, he also buffs all super class allies by two key and 50 percent defense he has damage reduction like he builds up by getting hit you're never going to get his full build up because with as long as an easy a lasts probably not likely for him to receive 10 attacks but he certainly will be a very very good unit even if you do end up using a different leader skill but I mean if you have this guy there's just no reason not to use him right because he covers everyone on the category for 200% but very good unit provides support to the team does exactly what we want him to do so he is the go-to leader for this extreme z battle now then we do have the piccolo now i know he's returning on one of the two banners so if you have done your summons first you might have pulled this guy for the first time or got dudes for him he leads battle of wits for 170 and then has the plus 30 percent to bond of master and disciple or movie heroes so you can make a team with him where a few of the characters will be getting the 200 percent lead in full otherwise everyone else will be getting the 170 but of course piccolo very very good right as long as you have a bond of master and disciple ally on the team to get his intro buff he has the first two appearances he'll have guard he builds up by getting hit he can very easily on his own or well on any 200 percent leader skill if he takes a couple of hits in slot one and then attacks he's doing like 10 mil attack stats so he's very very good of course an lr so legendary power and yeah this guy absolute beast um the giant form you're probably not likely to see i mean if you get a full superheroes rotation you can use it on turn three and then probably finish off the fight at that point but not something you need to rely on as much as we would do in other difficult end game content but it is there as an option uh, should it come up so piccolo definitely a very very good choice for the team 
Uh, then we have the STR Vegito. So I did mention in the Vegito team building guide, I mentioned Buhan. I don't know which order these are going to go up in, but depending on which EZA you decide to do first, if you've done the Vegito EZA, then obviously you could use him here with the Battle of Wits leader skill 3 key for 180. He has type advantage. Obviously, he'll be very, very good in this event. Like, decent unit post EZA. So, he will certainly be uh, very, very effective with his EZA. Before EZA, if you want to jump in and just do this one straight away to get him done, uh, or to get the Buhan done first, you could still use this guy, because he still has a Battle of Wits leader skill for 170, he's still a legendary power unit, he's STR, he just obviously won't be the craziest, he has a bit of damage reduction, like, he'll be good, if he takes a super in the later phases, he can still take some damage, but this unit could still certainly be very usable, even pre-EZA, for this event, so he is certainly worth considering as well. Um, then we have the Blue Boys from the Worldwide Celebration. So these guys don't lead Battle of Wits as their actual leader skill. But of course they have Battle of Fate, Future Saga, All Power Beyond Super Saiyan as their 170s. But then they also have the Super Class 150 as like the secondary backup. So you can run any Super Class leaders on, uh, units on their team. So you obviously can make a full Battle of Wits team using these guys' leader skill, right? And you will be able to get units that are on the 170 and even ones that are on the full 200. But if they're not, they're still going to get the 150. So these guys can definitely make a decent leader as well. But of course, you can just use them on the team under one of the other leads. And these guys can be very, very good. Good defensive slot one unit. Um, you're probably not going to get to see them transform, right? Because it's not until like turn five. Um, but they can be decent enough in terms of holding down slot one, getting those dodges, they've got guard, um, so they can certainly be very, very effective as well, and can make a decent leader, as we've already said. So, then we have the uh, physical boo duo from the 8th anniversary. They lead Power of Wishes or Final Trump card, but again... There are multiple, like Final Trump card has a lot of like Vegitos and things like that. So you certainly can make a full team of Battle of Wits using their leader skill. Um, Connected Hope of Margin Boost Saga is their plus 30%. They're infinitely stacking defense. Um, now, if you do get, uh, you have to be, what? It's the, uh, the four turns is if they've attacked a certain number of times. But if you're at 50% or less HP, you can use their standby like straight away. So if you are finding the later stages a bit more difficult and taking some damage, these guys having their standby ability usable will be quite useful. Otherwise, I mean, let's be fair, these guys, whilst they may have dropped off a little bit in terms of the toughest endgame content, for something like an Extreme Z battle, they're going to be very, very good. Especially if you can get a lot of key with them and they're getting off multiple supers. They're going to be doing a lot of damage while stacking their defense. EZAs don't really hit that hard, so they'll tank all normals for double digits and then they'll even tank supers reasonably well all the way through the 10 stages. Um, obviously, they're not a slot one unit, but post getting their attacks, they're going to be very, very good defensively. So they're a very good option as well. Uh, then we have Sword of Hope Trunks. He leads Time Travelers for 200%. So there is a build that you can make, obviously using him as a leader, which would involve some of the other future sagas or even some of the heroes characters. But just Trunks himself on the team can certainly be very good. He can also be the future saga ally that you need for the uh, blue duo. This guy can certainly be very strong. Now, his standby, you can't use it until turn 5, so you're probably not going to see that. But in terms of just in his base, he can get additional supers off. He builds up damage reduction as he goes. So he, like the Boo Duo, is going to be able to do a pretty solid amount of damage if he's getting off multiple supers, whilst also being relatively strong defensively as well. So another very good option for this team. Uh, then we have the Tech Vegito. Again, another good option for the Future Saga ally for the AGL Blue Boys. This guy can be very, very good. I mean, whilst you might not even necessarily get to turn 4, you can still use the good old strategy of just putting him in slot 3, getting the dodge chance. Obviously, if you've got a bunch of LRs on the team, he's got if he's got Legendary Power active, he's going to be doing a decent amount of damage. And then should you get to turn 4... He transforms, you're going to get guaranteed dodge, he's going to get off a bunch of additional supers, and the fight's probably going to end right there. So, Tech Vegito, definitely another very good option. I think this one has a lot more options for solid LRs than the uh, Vegito team one does, or the Vegito EZA like event does. 
Like all these units we've mentioned so far are all LRs and you could just make a team with any or all like combination of these guys and you should be able to get through very, very easily. So there are a couple of other units as well. We have the free to play STR Vegito Blue. Now we don't have a standalone named Vegito Blue that we've mentioned so far. So despite the fact that this guy's free to play, he's an LR and he's STR. Like, he's definitely worth putting onto the team as another unit to get Legendary Power activated. He's a Future Saga unit, so we've already got, like, the Blue Boys, Tech for Geo, uh, Sword of Hope Trunks, potentially. So he fits perfectly well on that team. Um, and then, yeah, he can just be very good. He doesn't, he doesn't need a Future Saga ally. He does Disable Guard if there is one, but he's STR, so it doesn't matter anyway. Um, so, yeah, this guy can be very good on the team and is a very solid free-to-play option. So I would say he is definitely worth considering, even if you have, like, you know, every summonable unit. If you want to try and get as many LRs on the team as possible and you're running some of those other Future Saga units that he's going to link up nicely with, this guy can still be a very good option. Uh, for this event so then we have a few TURs to mention mostly supports because as I say you kind of want to maximize the number of legendary power characters you want to have legendary power active as much as possible one of the best ways to do that is to just have your two main rotations be two LRs and then you can run TURs as like floating supports it can be annoying when you get bad starting rotations because of course the more TURs you have on your team the more likely you are to have a turn where you have two TURs and one LR and therefore you can't get legendary power active but this piccolo makes a really good choice he's got type advantage he's providing support to everybody obviously if you are running the lr piccolo you can have this guy linked up with him to share a ton of those links um for example you could put this guy slot one lr piccolo slot two and then another lr in slot three and then piccolo is going to be able to do some pretty decent damage um Piccolo, the LR does kind of want to get hit a bunch first, so maybe that's not the best way to play that rotation. And of course, if you put LR Piccolo slot 1, this guy slot 2, LR Piccolo doesn't have legendary power. But this guy can still be very good on the team for providing support. And if you get into a situation where you can put Piccolo in slot 2, then those links are going to be very helpful with this guy in slot 3. So he certainly is a worthwhile option despite being a TUR. Now, there's also this Piccolo. They share the same name, so you can only run one of them. But this guy, of course, has a Scouter, which can be very useful. If you are finding the stage a little bit more difficult, then having a unit with a guaranteed Scouter can certainly be helpful. He also recovers some HP when you're on low HP, which can be nice since you can't use items in an Extreme Z battle. So this guy could be worth putting on the team if you need that little bit of extra um, kind of defensive help with like having the scouter ability otherwise I think I would probably run the STR one if you are going to run one of the two uh, we also have the STR Mai so she has type advantage um, she's giving support to all super class allies as well as an extra buff to future saga so depending on the team build again we've already mentioned a bunch of future saga allies she could be really really good um, she can get if she gets multiple supers off she gets damage reduction so she can be very very good defensively um, well, she gets more damage reduction, right? She has some anyway, but um, she can get more if you get the additional supers. So she can be a very, very solid support unit for this team for this event, especially if you are running a bunch of those Future Saga characters. Um, she'll be a nice support unit to float into slot three and buff those guys up. Now, we have a couple of Heroes units I wanted to point out here. Now, in terms of Battle of Wits for the super class, we do have the Limit Breaker Super Saiyan 4 Vegito and the physical Super Saiyan 4 Vegito. Now, this guy ideally does want to be run on rotations with um, Giant 8 Power or Crossover. And that's how he gets the majority of his buffs. But if you're not using him as a slot 1 unit and you are running some of these other like characters that are going to share a bunch of links with him, he can still be relatively good. I think the big thing about Super Saiyan 4 Vegito is just how dominant he is once you actually have his full passive active. But I mean, if you have him with the physical Super Saiyan 4 Vegito and they do actually start together, he gets extra stats, he gets the extra chance to launch an additional super... Um, but then, of course, he's not going to get the crit chance or the extra damage reduction um, unless you have the full rotation. But he still has a bit of damage reduction. He can still hit relatively hard. Um, and then, yeah, of course, if he's linked up with this guy, this guy can hit very nicely. He doesn't have any restriction for allies on the team. He does get extra damage reduction per crossover or giant eight power ally, but he'll mostly be there for essentially supporting Vegito. He can counter super attacks, which is really good. So, I mean, these guys could make it onto the team although they are more suited to a hero setup. But if we go back to look at Battle of Wits, 
Um, you got the Dark King Fu actually has a sub lead for Battle of Wits. But when we look at Extreme STR, we have Dark King Fu, Hearts, and Sealess are all on here. Uh, and they're all heroes units. Um, they're all, all the heroes units that we show here are also time travelers. So they fit under that sort of Hope Trunks leader skill. Um, so you could actually, like, Toa's there, even though she has type disadvantage, she is a dodge character. You could make a full heroes team. You're just obviously uh, not going to have any LRs, so it's not going to be as effective. You do just want to get legendary power active as much as possible. With a strong LR team, you can blitz through this event and uh, yeah, make it pretty light work. Um, I should have mentioned AGL Pycon as an honourable mention for a TUR support unit as well. As long as you're getting the orbs for him, he's supporting and dodging. Uh, 21 can obviously be pretty good uh, with her attacks with the healing and everything. Um, Super Saiyan 3 Trunks is also there as another hero's unit. He can be okay defensively. Outdated now for like the current meta, but for an Extreme Z battle he would be perfectly fine. Um, I tried to focus more on like the type advantage TURs, but the new Vegeta is on there. So you could make a team with the new Vegeta and then Super Saiyans or Vegeta family. You can put all of those LRs on his team, get a bunch of legendary power stuff active. So this one has a lot of options. Not really much of a surprise that the Extreme Z battles where you're using a very super class heavy category have a lot more options, right? So definitely a lot of strong characters available uh, for your disposal for this event for the Buhan EZA. So like I said before, if there's any units you think I missed out or should have talked more about, let me know down below in the comment section. Let me know what your team is going to look like for the Buhan Extreme Z battle. So that is going to be it for the video, guys. This has been the Mars Ningen. Smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Check out the links down below for the Discord and the merch store, and I will see you all again soon. Have a good one.